glad that you are here. Welcome to Holly Naz. Let's open with a, with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you know, as we, as we come before you, Lord, we, we confess our need for you. And we ask that you renew our hearts, Lord, renew our minds and our lives, Lord, and help us, Lord, just to keep focus on what's pure and what's right, and just give us the power to be obedient, uh, your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to hear the congregation sing louder than us.
seated. getting good at hijacking Pastor, um, Pastor Dan's sermons in service. Um, you guys should be thanking me, though, because it does shorten his sermon when I take over time. Just kidding, Dan. We love his sermon. So I'm really excited today because we are having Graduation Sunday. And graduation, man, what a milestone that is. It's, you know, you start out with a preschool graduation, then you go to a kindergarten graduation, then you go to fifth grade graduation, then you go to the big one, which is high school graduation. And we are so lucky today that we have Miss Kaylee Elliott, our Fenton High School grad, who's going to come up here and see me for a few minutes. So you can correct anything I say that's wrong, okay? This is Kaylee First of Kaylee First of all, Elliot. where's my standing ovation, everybody? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Will was in charge of the cue card to have you guys stand up. I'm sorry he blew that one. <clears throat> all right. So, Miss Kaylee, you are a 23 Fenton High School graduate. Yes, ma'am. Your three favorite things, and I don't know if this is the correct order, but is sushi, Right? That's um, <laughs> friends yep. and family. Yep. Person you most admire. Get ready for tissues. You say it. My mom. Her mom. <laughs> and she had a whole week to think about that, and she still picked you, Mom. That's pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, favorite scripture? Um, well, if I know it, I'll put really at the top of my head. It's Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. And it was actually the verse that I, like, spoke at my baptism. And ever s it's been, like, meaningful. And Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, um, I forgot. Oh, uh, yeah. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. But we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Do you want to share a little bit about why that's so special to you? Um, the main reason why that's like important to me personally is because like nobody knows really what they're going to do in the future. I know I didn't. And well, with me like going to church, growing up in the church, having like the church influence, like having that family, like you guys are my family. You know, and you guys have a great influence on me. And through that, I became closer to Jesus, and I've seen He's got this plan for me. And I'm like, whoa! I'm like, whoa! Okay. And ever since then, I've been like, I've been growing like spiritually, physically. I hope. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it has like that powerful influence on me, like you guys do. So, um, you know, Kaylee has been in our church for quite a few years now. What, six, seven? Four. Like that. Four, four, four years. It's, you know, she's so special. It just feels like I've known her forever. Well, thank you. So, Kaylee, can you tell us what was your favorite thing about high school? Um, definitely my favorite thing in high school was my senior year. Not only because I'm like, whew, I'm leaving. <laughs> but because I actually made a lot of friends. I made new memories. And, well, I went through hard times, but paid off easily. Good. So it just changed me, not only as a person, but the way that I think. Very nice. Um, what about your least favorite? Um, homework. Nice. Most definitely homework. The bane of every student's existence, right, Deb? <laughs> um, what age did you realize that God was with you each and every day? Um, it was probably when I was 13. I was in eighth grade at the time. Um, I was going through a really rough time, really deep depression, and actually, yeah, and I started going to church more, and it was just, I was in a sad time, and I thought I was never going to change, 
But then one night, I opened my Bible and started reading it, and something just hit me, and I just burst into tears. I'm like, what am I doing? What is this? And ever since then, I'm like, ooh. That's awesome. That's why we need to get our kids in church, people. He will speak to them, and they will hear him, but they have to be here. Um, how has your relationship with Jesus helped you through these high school, high school years that you kind of just spoke on? Mm -hmm. Just having him there by your side, you knew it. Mm -hmm. You could rely on him. He's the one constant in our life. Everybody. He's the one constant. We can rely on him 100%. Um, what are you most looking forward to as you move on from the must-do education to the choose-to part of life? Well, I know with the choose-to, I'll definitely have a lot more opportunities. And my number one goal right now is to, like, make a difference and, like, spread what I'm, like, like I want to do. Like, I want to help the community, you know? That's my number one goal right now. I want to give back. I want to help people. I don't care if you're mean. I'm helping you. <laughs> That's amen, yes. Yeah, especially that mean part. And look at you, Dan. You drilled it into her. She got it. The rest of us will come behind, but she's gotten it. Um, if you could give a word of advice to an incoming freshman that would be helpful for them to navigate high school, what would that be? Um, I would probably say try to s just be yourself. I know that sounds really basic, but it's important. And just don't let other people have a say in what you want to do. Because if you let that get to you, no bueno. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Kaylee, we're very, very excited for this next journey that you're going to be on. And right now, we're going to take a moment. We're going to say a prayer over Kaylee. So if anybody wants to come up with me, and we're going to surround this little girl with love. And Jesus, we've invited him to the party, so he's here. Mama's right there. And Mama, superhero right here. Father God, we just want to thank you, Father. We want to thank you so much for the love that you've been showing Kaylee her entire life. And we're really thankful, Father, that she has accepted you into her life and at such a young age. And we're just... We're excited to see the journey that she's going to be on, and we're even more excited because we know she's taking you along with her. She's not going to leave you behind, Father. And we ask you to just give her the strength she's going to need to navigate the new waters that she's never put her toe in before, and now she's going to be jumping in. And we just want you to surround her with that love and strength that's going to give her the perseverance to be able to meet those goals that she has set for herself, Father. And, Father, we want to give you all the honor, glory, and praise for all that you've done and all that you will continue to do in Kaylee's life and in all of the other kids that are graduating high school this year, 2023. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right, everybody, you guys know. Okay, so we have another 2023 graduate. This one is a little older than Kaylee. And um, <laughs> now don't make fun of him. You know, we, it's all in our own time, right? So we're going to ask Pastor Dan to come up. So Dan, he got his standing ovation, yes. <laughs> so Dan, yes. congratulations Thank you. on graduating church college. Yes, church college. So okay. I don't know what college. Okay, Na Nazarene Bible College is an accredited college. So it's a real college. You get real degrees from Nazarene Bible College. I chose not to go that route because I didn't want to pay the extra money and I don't need an extra degree, so. I went with a certificate route. So you have a certificate? Yes. And but what is your certificate in? It's a ministry preparation program. So apparently I'm ready to do ministry. All right. 
<laughs> we trained him well. We packed with flying colors, so we trained him well, right? Um, did you have a mentor through the program that you could rely on to help you navigate the Bible and stuff you had to learn to be able to spit it back out to us? I did have a mentor through the program. How did that mentor help you? Uh, well, Mike Graham was my mentor, and he helped me because he would, you know, we were able to, this is going to sound bad, but complain <laughs> about different things, you know, in the ministry. Because the ministry sometimes, believe it or not, is tough. So when you have somebody you can talk to and somebody that you can throw ideas to and, and be open and honest with, it really helps. I'm sure it does. And then he's like a cheerleader. Keep going, keep going, you know. Amen. Yep. I can just hear him in his mm -hmm. voice pushing you on. Um, what was the hardest thing about doing school right now at this time of your life? You have a family that you're still raising. You have a job that you're doing, another job that you're doing, serve, community service. Don't we feel lazy? The hardest thing about school is the time. And you take, you know, you take a class, so only take one class at a time, but it's still 15, 20 hours a week. And anyone have a spare 15, 20 hours a week? That's, yeah, that, neither did I'm I. I'm borrowing so. from next week every week. All right, okay, that was perfect, yeah. Um, what advice would you give someone about um, going into a pastoral ministry through a Bible college or through any means, certificate, whatever? Are you sure? Are you sure? I mean, this truly is a mm -hmm. calling. Yeah, it's, this it's, is not it's, for everybody. I'm no. thankful that he has never called no. me to no. do that. No. But I'm yeah, thankful that uh, he has called you. I, I have an, an individual who comes to me and complains to me about class. And every once in a while, I have, to, I have to be his cheerleader and say, keep going. The education is good. good. And I get to see him hopefully finish. Hopefully. Be that cheerleader at the end of the finish line for yes. him. Yes. That's great. So we, your congregation, are so very happy that you have finally finished with this schooling. We've watched you be exhausted, excited, frustrated, down, relieved, and so many other emotions the last few years. We've prayed with you and for you many times. We hope you felt those prayers and the love that we surround you with on your journey. We are so proud of you and the examples you set, showing us that you are never too old to hear his call and to act on it. Never too old people answer his call. Um, I'm going to ask Ed to come up and anybody that wants to join us, we are going to bless this man with a prayer and send him on his way and we don't ever have to pray for him again. Right, congregation? He's all done. I've been, I've been the pastor for five years. Daily. We're going to pray for this man daily. Hey, hey. It's, it's getting crowded. It is getting crowded. All these people. <laughs> so back a couple of months in May, five years before that, I was not too far from Dan when all of a sudden he got the call and he ran out of the church. <laughs> and he looked angry to me. You know? I wasn't sure what was going on, but he had this very stern look on his face and uh, he came back and he was at him. I got to do it. I got to be the new pastor here. I said, wow. And I committed to him. I said, I will stick with you for thick and thin for a year. For, he gave me a year. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he gave me a year, and who else gave me a year? Uh, well, you, you gave he you gave a me year. a year. So I got guys here that gave me a year, and here we are five years later. You know, they're still giving me a year at a time, so I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, so here we are five years later, and uh, I have to tell you, I'm really excited because as school came to an end, I could see that the Holy Spirit was being reinvigorated in Dan and that he was recommitting himself to the ministry. And also, i had been so amazed through these many, many years with the Lord now of his timing. We're all sitting here kind of in, since COVID really kind of cut us down, um, wondering, are we going to grow again? What's going on? And around the same time that he reinvested himself, you know, school was done, he's ready to jump in with both feet, all of a sudden visitors start showing up. We're really glad to see the visitors, I, I'll tell you that. The one thing that's always been said about this little church, is we have lots of love here. Amen. Sometimes he tries to calm that down so we don't scare away the new visitors. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we are a group of people that, we have a wonderful core group. 
you know, I'm the plug the Wednesday night class. Most of the folks even come then, plus others. So we, we're solid. We're a solid little quarter. We're really glad and happy to have you know, new folks coming in. I hope that you feel our love and that you become part of that. Father, we just thank you for this man. Been my friend for a long time. And I'm very blessed to call him friend. I know going through that school program, it was offered to me once, I got scared and ran away and I did not come back. Uh, it's just, it's a tremendous load in uh, raising a family and uh, spending those seven minutes a day with the Bible, I'm teasing him again. Um, <laughs> it's just uh, a wonderful thing to watch him grow. You know, he's, a, he's a wonderful man, he's you know, such a good guy. And Father, we're just so thankful for the spirit that you put in him. The spirit that tells him to serve you and to serve us and to continue to grow and to accept criticism and work in the areas that he needs to expand. And Father, you know, and he's so close now just to being the total godly man package that we're so proud to call our pastor, Father. We're just so glad to have this man continue to be with him, work with him, lead him, and continue to give him fulfillment and help him through those hard times, Father, as only you can. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. You the man. I don't know what to do now. Do I? Do I like get on my knees when I come through the door? Yes, you I, do. You do. Almost enlightened <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, in my uh, memories, my pictures have all come up for six years ago. Six years ago, uh, Ed and I were in the White Mountains hiking together. And I think it was that trip that really cemented our relationship. Because we, we got, you know, when you're together all day hiking and then all night, and, you know, you guys are talking, and we, we found out that theologically, we're, we're very much alike. So, you know, we a hard, fast relationship, so I'm able to call on Ed in difficult times, and, and sometimes I'm able to push Ed to get to do things for me. I'm glad, I'm glad to have leaders that have committed to me. I thank, I thank you, Will. I thank you, Ed. I thank you, Diane. Thank you, Deb, for um, putting up with me and, and for committing to me and, and doing what you guys do and, 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 and choosing to serve here because if you didn't choose to serve here, you guys didn't choose to stick it out none of us would be here right it's not just me it, none of this is just me it, it takes all of us to do it so everyone that's that, that is here and all of you that love me thank you i appreciate it um and i don't think you know how relieved i am to be done with this program with this program yeah oh man it's <laughs> my wife is relieved that i'm done for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's um, yeah. It, it, gets, it gets to be difficult when you're trying to fit in 15 to 20 hours with everything else. However, however, we'll get there. I'm not preaching yet. We'll get there. <laughs> I know, I know. So June 17th is the next senior soup. It is here, and we are the hosts. All right, we are the hosts. So. And then July 1st, it is also here. However, we are not the host on July 1st. So we're the host in, in a couple weeks. Um, I will be cooking the soups. And I will still... And I will be doing the music. He'll, he'll still be doing the music. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be doing something too. I don't know what yet, but I'm going to be making up a sign-up sheet. And I will bring so, it. We'll, we'll have another sign-up sheet so people can, once again, know what roles they're going to play. I, we have a lot of people that love to serve, and that's awesome. It really is. I, I, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people that want to serve, but when we're doing the senior soup, this is going to sound really bad, we don't need everyone to serve, right? We need somebody to cook. We need somebody to actually serve. We like, like two servers, somebody to set up. And you start to, to count the people you really need, maybe seven, and that's, those that want to serve, if I say I don't need you this, this time, don't get offended. Because 
Next time we will use you. Right? It's just, but still come. And still talk to, the, talk to the folks that show up. Still be a part of it. Just understand that you can come and just be a part of it. You don't have to serve. That's true. Yeah, being friendly. And that's, yeah, building the church, right? Building the whole church. And, and last time we had it here, we had a fantastic turnout. It, it was good. Yeah, I heard it was fun. I had fun. <laughs> and then, this Friday, June 9th, is Euchre Night. It's this Friday, June 9th, isn't it? Yeah, it's this Friday. Yeah. Yep, this Friday, June 9th. June 9th, this Friday, we're playing Euchre, 6.30. And the cost to play Euchre is nothing. If you don't know how to play Euchre, show up anyways. Right? Have fun. Enjoy each other's company. And it's just about having fun. I might be a little competitive when it comes to playing cards, but I tone it down a lot when I am playing for fun. I try not to count the cards when I'm playing for fun. I try not to. It's hard not to. It's only euchre. There's only 24 cards. It's hard not to count them. <laughs> and talking about counting, are you ready for an offering? <laughs> oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, as we give back to you, I ask that you take these tithes, you take these offerings, Lord, and you multiply them and do infinitely more than we ask and infinitely more than we think you can do. Lord, don't just provide enough, but provide excess so we could be a blessing to those around us. In your name we pray, amen. So, I'm not even sure really how to begin this particular sermon. Um, anyone know what this month is? It's Pride Month, right? So it creates, I, I can see the looks on faces. And it, it, it creates a tension. It creates a tension. It creates a tension in the church, and it creates a, a huge tension if you read Facebook. I mean, people are like, oh my gosh, this is horrible, you can't have this, and, and we need to reclaim this month for Jesus. And My thought is, what are we focusing on? What are we looking at? What is it that we're thinking? What's that? Are we thinking hatred? I th are we thinking division? I, you know, if you read some of these posts, Deb, they may be. Right, I know you're not. I know you're not. I know, I know that Sorry, we're not. Ah. It's everyone else. But let's, let's just drop the whole, the whole pride gay issue. It's not about the pride gay issue. It's about what are we as believers focusing on? Love. Right? Are we looking in the right things? Are we going after the right things? What you looking at? Right? What are we supposed to be looking at? The love, not that. It doesn't. We expect, I expect, you should expect, people who aren't in the church to not be people that are in the church. That make sense? Did I say that right? People who aren't in the church don't expect them to be people that are in the church. Sinners that don't believe in Christ don't expect them to have the same moral aptitude that you have. Okay? And then we get upset, sometimes we get upset when sinners don't have the same moral aptitude that we have. 
Does it ever derail you? You get so caught up with people who are wicked and what they're doing and, and how they're thriving that you focus on what they do. And God, what, what is going on here? Sometimes, sometimes, maybe not everybody here, but sometimes we lose our focus. We lose our focus, and we, and we focus on, on different things. Um, one of my favorite books, I've met, mentioned it once or twice, is Me, I Want to Be. And he's got one of my most favorite quotes in here. When you're talking about your spiritual well-being, ask these two questions. Am I growing more easily discouraged these days? Am I growing more easily irritated these days? When I'm growing more easily discouraged, what am I looking at? Negative. So again, I'm looking at people in the world thinking, Lord, what's going on? I'm getting discouraged because, God, you're supposed to, to be in control of all of this. If God's in control of all of this, it's a mess. He gives us free will. That's why it's a mess. Understand that. We're not robots. I thank God that it gives us free will because I look at some of the things I've done in my past and they aren't all that good and I'm glad he doesn't strike, didn't strike me down so I can't expect him to strike someone down who doesn't believe. But I'm still going to question. I'm still going to wonder, God, where are you at in all of this craziness? Sometimes it makes you want to question my very belief. God, where are you at in all this craziness? Open your Bible to Psalm 73, and we'll see that it's okay to question that. It's possible for us to question that. And God isn't going to strike us down when we question him, or when we question what's going on. He's not that kind of God. And I'm so thankful that he's not that kind of God. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. I'm going to start at verse 1. Truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me... I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping, and I was almost gone. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper, despite their wickedness. They seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. They wear pride like a jeweled necklace and clothe themselves with cruelty. These fat cats have everything their hearts could ever wish for. They scoff and speak only evil. In their pride, they seek to crush others. They boast against the very heavens, and their words strut throughout the earth. And so the people are dismayed and confused, drinking in all their words. What does God know, they ask? Does the Most High even know what's happening? Look at all these wicked people, enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper, but what a difficult task it is. Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the the destiny of the wicked. Truly, you put them on a slippery path and send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. Then I realized that my heart was bitter, and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and arrogant, I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet, I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail, my spirit may grow weak, 
but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Those who desert him will perish, for you will destroy those who abandon you. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter, and I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. Asaph wrote this song, wrote this psalm, wrote this psalm. Who is Asaph? Asaph, in 1 Chronicles 25, 1, 2, David and the, armies, David and the army commanders then appointed men from the families of Asaph, Heman, and Judthan to proclaim God's messages to the accompaniment of lyres, harps, and cymbals. So Asaph was a spiritual leader. A spiritual leader who was in charge of worship. And yet, Asaph had it all together. Never doubted what God did. We just, we just read that? I never doubted you, God. Everything was perfect. We didn't, no, you don't think so. We didn't read that. I mean, in Psalm, just in Psalm 2 or 3, he almost lost his footing. He almost lost his footing. So here's a guy who's a spiritual leader who almost lost his footing because what is he doing? Look, looking at the world, looking at all the wicked people who are prospering. If a spiritual worship leader almost loses his footing, that leaves me no hope. Now, but the thing is, I have, if, if this guy can doubt, I can doubt. If it's going to happen to a spiritual leader, it's going to happen to everybody. And what's God going to do when it happens? He's still going to be there. Yeah, he's going to hold us in his hand. He's not going to throw you out. He's not going to crush you down. That's not the kind of God he is. He's not that kind of God. And think about this in verse 13. That I keep my heart pure for nothing. That I keep myself innocent for no reason at all. Who here ever wonders why they keep doing this Christian thing? Okay. I'm glad that there's some people actually raising their hands. I'm the same way. Asaph was the same way. Why, am I, why do I do this? What's the point? Wicked people are out there prospering. Wicked people are out there having a grand old time. Why am I doing this? Again, what does God do? How dare you? How dare you question me? Get out! It's not who God is. That's not what God does. He encourages us. Fills you with love. And see, so the thing is, that what I love about the Psalms is because the Psalms allow us all the, the whole gambit of human emotions. We can question God. We can say, why? Why am I doing this, Lord? We can come right to him and say, why am I doing this, Lord? Why do I get up Sunday morning? Why do I come to church? Why do I come to church on Wednesday night? Why do I bother dealing with believers? <laughs> it's better than the others. <laughs> but it's the thing is, God loves us so much. He lets us have these questions. He lets us come to him. And shows us in his word, it's okay to have these questions. It's okay. You can, you can question. You can question me. You can say, why is this going on? And uh, I love verse 15. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. Trust me, if I told you all the things that went on in my head, you'd run or you'd throw me out the door. I mean, honestly... My mind has got things going on and questions about God that I'm afraid to voice. We all have that, right? We all have that. And there's a certain amount of fear in each of us. Oh, if I let somebody know I actually have that question or I actually have that doubt, what are they going to think of me, right? Right? Let's, 
I tell you what, to really be open and honest with somebody, it's tough. It's tough. And, and there are things we're going, we're going to keep in our heads. And we should keep in our heads, right? There are some things that we should keep in our heads. And it's sometimes you, you may not want to tell the person what's going on in your head, but you can definitely tell them, hey, just pray for me. You don't have to tell them every little detail. But God, yeah, God knows, right? I'm struggling today. I've got some things going on today. I'm, I need some help. Just pray for me. What's going on? Just pray for me. Just please pray for me. And just leave it at that, Right? And then we pray for that person. Diane's good at this. She just, on Wednesday night, someone needed a prayer. She's like, oh, let's pray right now. Perfect. You know, but it's okay. Again, it's okay to have these doubts. It's okay to have these questions. It's okay to say, God, what's going on? And as he has these questions, as he has these difficulties, he realizes something. Then... Then, in verse 17, Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Finally understood the destiny of the wicked. So the wicked are prospering. The wicked are doing well. Things are going great for them. How long is life on this earth? Very short. We are made for eternity. And this is but a breath, but a vapor. You live for 120 years on this earth. It's but a breath. But a vapor. The destiny of the wicked, I feel sorry for the destiny of the wicked. I really do. And he understands what the destiny of, of the wicked is going to be. So he, I don't have to worry about it because I don't need to focus on them. We don't focus on the wicked. We don't focus on their prosperity. We don't get bent out of shape about what they're doing. Pray for them, absolutely. And then we get into verse 21 and 22. Then I realized, then I realized my heart was bitter, and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and arrogant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. I'm the one that's bitter. I'm the one that's tore up. When I'm looking at the things that are going on, and I'm getting all bent out of shape because of the evil in the world. I'm getting all bent out of shape because sinners are sinners. I get bitter. I get bitter. Whose fault is it? Right. I, again, it's my fault. Right? It's my, I'm the one. You think they care? No. 99.99% of the people don't care what you think. They don't care how you feel. You're bitter because of something that somebody else is doing because of, you know, oh my, they're not, you know, they're succeeding in life and they don't love God. Don't. Again, it, will you? You might. A little bit. Yeah, sometimes. And you can continue down that road. You can continue worrying about the wicked. You can continue being all consumed about how they're not as moral as you and they're not doing the things you're doing or how they're succeeding in life and you're not succeeding in life. You can keep doing that. Who's, who's being hurt by that? You are. We are. It's on us. It's on us. Finally, Asaph remembers where his focus is supposed to be. Yet, I still belong to who? I still belong to you. Even though I have these questions, even though you think I'm foolish, even though I seem like a senseless animal to you, God, you still hold my right hand. He still holds his right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, leading me to your glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail, and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart, 
He is mine forever. How long is God with you? Forever. How long is God with you? Forever. Who's the strength of your heart? God is. What are you focused on? What are you looking at? What's that? Salvation. You get discouraged some days? Yes, you do. What are you looking at when you're discouraged? God. God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Mike, Mike said that uh, she was looking at him. That's why we're laughing, those folks online. That's why I'm laughing. Um, but our, yeah. Hope in God. Our hope is in God. It should be in God. And, you know, we know, we know, our minds should know, but our emotions don't always follow what we know. Again, ASAP here, his emotions are all bent out of shape. He knows where he's supposed to focus. He knows what he's supposed to look at. So much so that he thinks he's a traitor to his people because his emotions are, God, I'm looking at all this wickedness. These people are prospering. I'm looking at the wrong things. I have questions in my head. If I voice them, I'm going to be a traitor because I'm a spiritual leader. We know, hopefully we know, where our focus should be. Sometimes we have to remind our emotions where our focus should be, what we should be looking at, what we should be concentrating on. We should be able to tell ourselves, we should be able to read Psalm 73, 28 and say, but as for me, but as for me, how good it is to be near God. How good it is to be near God. I've made the sovereign Lord my shelter and I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. What are we focusing on? The Lord. What should we as believers be experiencing? Joy. Love overflowing. Joy indescribable. Peace beyond measure. Love overflowing. Joy indescribable. Peace beyond measure. Not just love, joy, and peace. I want to go beyond that. Love overflowing. Joy indescribable. Peace beyond measure. When you're not experiencing these things, whose fault is it? Your own. Now, when you do feel these things, is God going to beat you up? No, he's not. Again, our minds, okay, I know that I should be having these love overflowing, joy indescribable, peace beyond measure. I know it, but as I go throughout the day, every step I'm taking, it's going further and further away from me because my emotions just keep churning up and churning up and churning up. And that might go on all day. That might go on all week. What you're looking at? What you're focusing on? Every time I get to that point, I have to step back and go right back to the basics. Right back to God loves me no matter what. And he just wants me to pray to him. He wants me to come to him. He wants me to love him and love others. That's what works for me. What works for you? What are, when, when you're looking at the wrong thing, what works to you to recenter you to look at the right thing? So say, I'm going to look at God. I'm going to look at him. I'm going to have him be the source of everything for me. It's a tough question. Why don't you think about it all week long? What you looking at? What you looking at? Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, I thank you so much that you allow us, you give us the grace and so much mercy to, to be able to question, to question you, to, to question why, why, why things just seem way out of whack in the world. And Lord, you even give us the ability to, to question why we continue to seek you. And when we question you, you don't just get mad at us. You don't throw us out. You don't abandon us. You love us no matter what. Holy Spirit, I ask that 
you help each of us to, to remember the focus on you. To remember that you are the source of our strength. That you are the source of our love. You are the source of our joy. You are the source of our peace. Help us remember that. Holy Spirit, help us remember that. And, and help us to, when we do get sidetracked, to be thankful that you're right there beside us, that you're leading us, and that you're guiding us. In your name we pray, amen. Those online, have a fantastic week. Those that are still here, we have potluck.